Welcome to Daz Geek. Today we're going to talk about does size matter? I'm kidding. We're totally not. But this is proof that maybe size doesn't always matter because we're going to talk about this Minis Forum Mini PC. And this is about five inches by five inches by two inches approximately. It is very small. In fact, it's so small that it comes with a vase amount so you can mount it on the back of your monitor. Now, the use case for these is plentiful. A lot of people use these as desktop replacements. There's no reason you couldn't use this if you're doing coding, some basic video editing and things like that in this tiny, small form factor. And it's insanely quiet. You'd have to put your ear up to it to be able to really hear this thing. Another use case for this is servers. People want to run all of their media, Plex Media, Next Clouds, all of those things from a small device. They don't want a giant blade server that sounds like an airplane taking off when it turns on. Spouses generally don't like that, and they don't really go with most decor in the living room. Whereas something like this, you could zip tie underneath the TV and nobody would even notice. And it's got tons of power packed in. In fact, this comes with the AMD Ryzen 7 3750H. That's four cores and eight threads. You get the RX Vega 10 graphics. You can get up to 32 gigabytes of RAM in this and a 512 gigabyte SSD. And it has tons of ports. Eat that, Apple. This is a really cool device we're going to check out. And I have to give a huge shout out to the Minis Forum team and the Manjaro team because they sent this to the destination Linux crew for us to do a review, but also they let us keep the unit. A lot of times when you get these units to review, they make you send them back. In this case, they're like, hey, keep it, put it into production, do something cool with it. And that is just awesome. So huge shout out again to the Manjaro team and Minis Forum. Thank you for sending this over. You know I love these small form factor machines. That's why I built my Mini B. So let's get into the unboxing. Then I'm gonna tell you some of the use cases that I used it for. And it's got a really good price that comes with this as well. And I'll compare it to some of the other small form factors like the Intel Nooks and things that I've played with before. Let's get right into it. Let's do it. All right, so we've got a box and it's uh, a pretty box. You know, it's a nice box. And I come to appreciate boxes. When you look at the System76 launch keyboard and its box compared to this one, it makes a little bit of a difference. You feel like you're getting a really nice product here. So they packaged it well. They didn't over package it, which is nice. And when we're looking at the back of this device, you can see we have plenty of vents there for cooling. We also have vents that are on the back of this little device. Now, again, this is about five inches by five inches by two inches. So it's quite a small little device here that we're messing with. As far as ports go, you got your two USB ports, your HDMI, your display port, your LAN port, and of course your power. But one of my favorite things is you just pop the top. You click to pop the top and boom, you're in. No screws, no nothing, no nonsense. You can get in there, you can clean the dust out, you can change your RAM, and of course, if you want to get further in, you might have to pull out a screwdriver, but it's made to get in. And that's what is so beautiful about this device. Additionally, what they package it with, you get a display port cable. Imagine actually including the cables. Apple, I'm looking at you. You get a nice little HDMI cable as well. So whichever one you're going to choose, you've got an option for it in the box. A very thin, slim power cable. You've got your power brick there. And now we start getting into the cool stuff. You got a vase amount and you have a SATA drive connector. So immediately you can go into expanding this and adding in an extra SATA drive, which is exactly, of course, what I did immediately in this device. So they give you everything you need. You don't have to buy all this extra stuff, which I really appreciate from Minis Forum that they packaged all of those things and created a really nice unboxing experience. And let's just be honest, it creates a really good first impression to have a nice unboxing with it. And you've got all the accessories you need to get started. Now here I'm connecting, this is just a drive I happen to have laying around, this Pony SATA drive. Now there were no instructions. So I didn't know where this drive was supposed to go. Like, did you just lay it in there? Eventually realized it actually attaches to the bottom of the hood that we just popped off. And you can see here, I'm trying to figure out what the right arrangement is. There it is. Nope, gotta flip it over again and see where the right arrangement is to connect this. Finally found it, connected my SATA drive up, and now, of course, we're gonna put the screws into this device so that it stays nice and stable, but they thought of that too. So you've got a two and a half inch drive, solid state drive that you wanna to add to this. You can do that right there, and it's a very simple process. I do wish they included a little bit of instructions for some of the additions and things, but it's a minor complaint. I was able to figure it out. And now that you've watched this video, 
you've been able to figure it out as well. So now we can wrap this up, right? We're gonna connect everything and we don't have a bunch of screws that we have to go find and make sure there's not different screws over here and different screws over there. We just click the top into place. That's with our new 2.5 inch upgrade to the storage on this device and we're ready to rock and roll. So let's look at Manjaro on this device and some of the things that I've done. First of all, Manjaro is beautiful. It's just, it's always been beautiful. You can see I have Pi Hole here, Nextcloud, and a game called Progress Quest, which is an AI game that plays itself. I just found it. I kind of have a little bit of an obsession with it. I'm also running OBS at the same time here, and it's using somewhere around 24, 28% of the CPU. So this is capable. I've done Plex server as well of running multiple servers and applications on it, no problem, it does a fantastic job. The issues start to come in with performance when we come to gaming, which we'll get into in a second, but you could see only Office and other things, this would be great for a child or a kid who's doing homeschooling, wants to do homework or things, because it's got all of this cool stuff here. Now, when it comes to gaming, the first thing I did is try to keep it at 2K with all high settings and keep everything running. Not a fair test, granted, not a fair test, and we're getting about 10 frames per second. That's not really playable. That's OBS, Pi Hole, Nextcloud, Progress Quest. Everything's running in the background. Plus, we're trying to game. So then I went in and tried to do some different settings here to see if we could improve things. And I was just showing I had OBS up at the same time so that you could see that we're not really doing a fair test. So now we're going to make some changes and make everything medium settings. And once we change things to medium settings, it starts to get a little more playable. You can see we're getting into a little bit higher frame rates. We're at 23. It's gonna start picking up a little bit here in a second as it adjusts, but that's still not good enough for CSGO. We start to get in the 30s, you can see there. That's still not really playable. You need to be around 50, 60 frames per second. You should be much higher, and I expected higher performance out of this, but there's something there again that just doesn't seem to be tweaked right with this vega graphics and cpu so now we change to 1920 by 1080 and we're finally getting into the 40s with the frame rate but again not what i expected to get out of this machine i expected it to be much faster so can you game on it sure but you're not going to have the greatest experience at least with the version that i got if you're running these games even at 1920 by 1080. so the next thing we need to do is perhaps check out vulcan because a lot of people are going to say, hey, if you're not running Vulkan, maybe you can get some more performance out of it. See, I predict like an Oracle your comments below. So we did the launch options for Vulkan as well, and I really didn't get any better experience. You can see we're getting still in the 30s here of frames per second. So Vulkan didn't seem to help. So I don't know if this is a tweak issue with Manjaro. I don't know if this is a hardware issue. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Again, if you have one of these devices, I would love to know. Maybe you're having a different experience than me, or it could just be the game. So I did try some other games. We got Borderlands here. This is one they show in their video on the site, getting really good frames per second. It's not running terribly, but it's not running fantastic, I would say, either. You're getting good enough frames per second to be playable, but barely. You're getting somewhere in the 30... 40 frames per second there, sometimes in the 20s, especially when you start getting into battles and things, it drops significantly. So again, it's not the game performer that I expected it to be. You're not gonna be streaming games from this to your other computers and having a fantastic time playing it, which is unfortunate. You can see some of the lag and things that kick, pick up as the enemies start filling the screen. So now that I've shown you around this little desk mini device, I wanna give my final impressions of it. This is a very small, fun device for you to utilize for different server applications. If you wanna run a really nice, maybe even 4K Plex media server, 2K video, those type of things, or Kodi server, or if you wanna set up a file server, a Kodi server, and other applications like that, Nextcloud, those things. Stuff that you could also do on a Raspberry Pi. You might have to have a couple Raspberry Pis to handle all of them, but you could do it all with one little device connected to a monitor. And you could utilize this for something like homeschooling for kids who maybe play some games that are not AAA graphics, some lower end games. And that's really what the purpose of this device, in my opinion, is. Now, interestingly, this device was kind of touted as having very similar specs to the Steam Deck. But you could see in the gaming realm, it didn't really do very well. 
I don't know if that's a specific issue with this device or if it's just an issue with Manjaro and gaming on this device. Maybe the Vega is not fully being taken advantage of here. I'm not quite sure, but there was some video on Mini's forum site of them playing Borderlands and things like you saw me playing and having much better experience as far as frame rate and things than I was getting from those games, typically between 30 and 40 frames per second. And usually with most of these games, I'm having to lower it to low quality or medium quality in order to play them effectively, even in 1920 by 1080, and certainly wasn't able to do much gaming well at 2K. So from a gaming perspective, it didn't really hit any of the marks I was hoping and certainly wasn't as powerful as the Intel Nook, like the, even the 8i7 Intel Nook, which I have some videos on as well, did absolutely blew my mind with gaming, especially in the form factor, considering how small it was. Whereas this one was kind of what I would expect from most mini computers. And well, I expected this one to actually game really well, and I didn't get that out of there. So maybe I just didn't win the silicon lottery. You know, a lot of times, some of the chips that you can get, it is a lottery system. You may get a really fast version of a chip, and you may get a dud. So either I kind of got a dud version of this Ryzen 7 3750H, which is a mobile CPU, or there's just something that's keeping this device from really reaching its full potential there from a gaming standpoint. From a server standpoint, it's absolutely fantastic. Manjaro runs beautiful on it. I've had a lot of fun with this device. The question is, would I have spent my own $500 on this and been happy? It just depends. Again, if I wanted to have a really high-end media streaming server or something like that in my home, then maybe. But for everyone else, I think there's other options out there. I am very impressed with Mini's forum. I'm impressed they have a lot of offerings out there outside this one that I would look at in the future because of how impressed I was with some of the things they did do so well. For instance, the device is extraordinarily quiet. The fans that they used were very nice. They used high quality components inside. You're able to repair it and get into it with absolute simplicity and ease. The ability to get into this device without even having to get out a screwdriver is absolutely amazing, especially living in a day when everybody else is gluing everything down and soldering everything down. They're making it so everyone can get inside and upgrade the RAM or be able to check the components or clean it out. And that is something that I absolutely adore from this company. I love that they included display port cables and VESA mounts and other things in here. I feel like they really wanted to give you a nice premium feel. Again, there's just something with the specs in the combination of Manjaro on this from the gaming perspective that didn't hit the marks with the version that I have. If you've gotten one of these and have had a great gaming experience on it, I would love it if you'd let me know in the comments below. I also wanna give a huge shout out and thanks to DigitalOcean. I need you right now to go to do.co slash tux2022. That's do.co slash tux2022 and check them out. If you wanna run servers and things, that's my other alternatives. But if spending $500 on a piece of hardware, you could just simply go to DigitalOcean and use the cloud servers there. They're absolutely amazing. I even set up PyHole on this, but you could set up PyHole on all those things in DigitalOcean for a $5 a month droplet, which is gonna save you a lot of money in the long run. So if you're comfortable with cloud services, there's none better than DigitalOcean. Go to do.co slash tux2022, go check them out. And thank you to my patrons for all of your support and for continuing to help me be able to do cool things like this. Because the more this channel grows, the more hardware and things are going to come our way and the more reviews that I can do for you. So again, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about the Minis Forum. Were you impressed with some of its capabilities? Right now, I have it running the Pi Hole. I have it running NextCloud and doing all those things. And I'm going to keep it there. And I really appreciate Minis Forum and Manjaro for partnering up and sending this to us for us to check out. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains.